This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. My name is Steve. I'm here because you broke something and this time it's an Xbox One Elite 2 controller. I paid $99 for this controller on eBay. Now I'm gonna see if I can figure out what's wrong and see if I can fix it. So I've already got it out of the packaging it came in. Let's open it up and see exactly what condition it's in. Okay, it's actually, it actually looks like it's in really good condition. It's definitely dirty. Needs a good cleaning for sure. You can see it's got all kinds of stuff here, but other than that, oh. <coughs> that definitely picked up a lot of smoke smell. So that's gonna be a big problem on this. I'm gonna have to disassemble this entire thing to get all the smoke smell off of the case. And I'm hoping I can even do it. Sometimes the smoke smell just doesn't come out of things. So that's the first thing I noticed. Let's take a look and see if there's anything else we can notice. All the little buttons and everything seem to work normally. Obviously I haven't plugged it in yet. I'll plug it in in a minute and see. It wouldn't surprise me if these uh, analog sticks were bad. Other than that, it actually all seems pretty good. Do we have all the parts to it? We've got these. Yeah, it looks like we do have all the parts for it. It's always handy. These little parts sometimes cost a lot of money to replace, so. This little piece that goes right here, looks like it actually popped out. So I'm just gonna put that on real quick. There we go. Okay. So initial impressions, this actually looks in good condition. The smoke smells gonna be a big problem, but I think I can get that taken care of. I'll have to disassemble the whole thing, clean it all really well, and then that should take care of the smoke smell. But first, I'm gonna plug it into a gamepad tester just to see what exactly is wrong with this so then we can get any of the other problems fixed. So I've got this controller set up and connected to a gamepad tester. I'm gonna check thumbsticks first because that's usually what the problem is. Although, that thumbstick is perfect. Let's check the right thumbstick. The right thumbstick is also perfect. Okay, right trigger, left trigger. Oh, we don't have anything on the shoulder buttons. We have no input from any of these buttons. Okay, the X button works. So it seems we have no input from any of these buttons right here, the ABXY buttons and also the D-pad. So let me try the buttons underneath. Also seem to get nothing there. So I'm gonna check and see what the seller said was wrong with this. I don't even remember what it was. I should have checked that first, but I'm gonna check it now and see what the seller said and see if we can replicate that here. Here is the description for this controller. The item is not working as it should. Device has wear from being used. Buttons on the controller do now work do not work, or when they do work, they do not work as they should. Items are being sold for parts or repair. So the seller description isn't super descriptive. I'm gonna try a couple other tests on this and see if I can trace down the problem before we get it taken apart. So I'm using one other tester just to make sure that there's no issue with the tester itself. So when I look at this tester, all the same things happen. Once we get to these shoulder buttons or the ABXY buttons, there's just nothing at all going on. So I think at this point, it's time for everyone's favorite part. Let's take it apart. Okay, and believe it or not, this is actually the first time I've taken apart an Xbox Elite 2 controller. I'm guessing it must come apart right here. That is just a guess though. Okay, that was actually a little bit nerve wracking. I can't remember the last time that I've taken something apart that I've never taken apart before. I think it's been a while. Okay, but we're in. Now it's time to remove these screws, it looks like. Then we can get under this piece, see what we have going on in here. It looks like that is a Torx T9. 
Looks like we have some sort of warranty sticker. Oops, we don't need no stinking warranty anyways. This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket. It's actually designed to fit easily in your front pocket and it's seriously changed my whole pocket situation. Most people are still carrying around wallets designed in the 90s, carrying around old gift cards and receipts, but the Ridge Wallet can change all of that. I really love it, but don't take my word for it. There's over 30,000 five-star reviews. As you guys know on this channel, I love to take things apart. One of my favorite things about this Ridge Wallet is I can actually take it apart. It actually even comes with extra screws right in the box. I can remove this money clip if I'd like to, or I can add another money clip on the front of the wallet as well. Another thing I love is that the Ridge Wallet is made with RFID blocking technology that protects me from digital pocket pickers. That's not something I had to think about back when I bought my first wallet, but it's certainly something I have to think about now. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash tronixfix. That's ridge.com slash tronixfix and use the code tronixfix at checkout. The top link in the description will take you right there. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at these contacts real quick. There's a little bit of corrosion right in there. Let me show you that. There we go. So there's a little corrosion there. I doubt that's enough to cause a problem, but since there's corrosion there, most likely there's more corrosion in this thing. So this is looking like probably some sort of liquid damage. And we definitely have some liquid damage. There's not a lot so far. We've got liquid damage on these components. Maybe some down here. And maybe some right here. Some of this stuff is totally normal, this white looking stuff. Sometimes that's totally normal, but this definitely is not. And this board right here seems to be the board that was having the biggest problem. So I'm actually gonna take this board off and then we'll take a look at this blue board underneath of it. All right, now on the regular Xbox One controllers, there's a connector here. Feels like it's the same on this one. So, I don't know if I can pull this all the way out. We got the uh, headphone jack that fell out, that's normal. So I'm just not getting enough clearance here to get this green board out. I'm not sure how to take these trigger switches off, but I think I might need to take this screw out down here and down here. So I'm gonna try that next. I don't know if that removes them or not. There is a pin down in there that I might need to take out, but let's see if this does anything. When in doubt, take out more screws, right? Okay, let's see what that did. Oh, there we go. That's what I was hoping. Okay, that whole thing just came apart, all right. That means we should be able to do the same with this one, hopefully, there we go. Yep, got it, okay. Now, can we lift this out? Okay, the problem seems to be this analog stick cover right here doesn't actually fit through this blue motherboard. You can't really see very well, but this hole down here is just too small. So I've got to take this off first. I am not totally sure it comes off. It must come off. I've never tried that with these before. On normal controllers, it's actually pretty easy to get these off. On this one, it is not. Okay, yeah, yeah, it unscrews. I can hear you yelling at me in the comments. Yes, I should have known that, but I didn't, okay? So these unscrew from the analog stick on the motherboard. That's actually a good sign. That means that these analog sticks are probably upgraded over the normal ones. Either way, we have that off. Now we should be able to get that motherboard out. Now we should be able to get this green motherboard at least out enough to get a look at this blue motherboard underneath. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's better. Now it's not gonna come out all the way. We do have these gray wires still attached, but this should give us at least an idea of what might be going on under here. Yep, definitely some liquid damage there, as well as some liquid damage over here. I am gonna remove this blue motherboard so we can get a full look under here and see if we can see any other liquid damage under here. 
I do also wanna say real quick, if you're having analog stick issues with drifting analog sticks, this is normally the part that needs to be replaced. Sometimes you can just get take some canned air and blow in here and then also some IPA and brush in there and try and get all the dirt and debris out. But usually these just need to be replaced. And to do that, you actually have to heat up all these little solder points right here until that analog stick falls out the bottom and then you can put a new analog stick up in there and then redo all the solder joints. So it's definitely not an easy job, definitely not for someone that doesn't know how to solder, but that's how you do it. Okay. I think we can just pull this out. It's got this metal stud in the back here. And then it's still attached up front here too. There we go. Okay, let's see. Actually, it's not in too bad a shape. This definitely needs to be cleaned. This is worrisome. You got like some rust around this switch. We'll get that cleaned up though and see if that will still work. Other than that, this doesn't look to be in too bad a condition. Maybe a little bit of liquid damage on this chip. But overall, this looks pretty good. Now while I'm in here, I will remove all these buttons and clean them all. Since we're here, we might as well just do a full refurbishment of this controller. Now that I have all those buttons nice and clean, it's time to take a look at the motherboard. And for that, I'm gonna need a microscope so I can really see what's going on. So I'm gonna get under the microscope and let's see how bad the liquid damage is. So here we have a little bit of liquid damage. And over here we have even more liquid damage. Nothing here, this looks good. Looks good under there. And here we go, some more liquid damage. Right here possibly liquid damage under this chip, so we'll need to clean that up with a toothbrush. And that's it for this side. I'm gonna turn this board over and we'll check the other side. So here's the other side of the board. Right away I see some pretty serious liquid damage here. Looks like these thumbsticks could use a good cleaning. A Little more liquid damage here. And a tiny bit up here even. Even got one pin on this connector right here that looks like it's got some damage. So for this sort of liquid damage, the first thing I'm gonna do is take my dental pick and just try and clean up all the little joints. And then I'll take my toothbrush with some 99% isopropyl alcohol, clean that all up, and then we'll turn it over and do the same thing on the other side of the board. And then I'll make sure the board is fully clean to get off any smoke residue. Then it'll be time to reassemble the controller. So I'm just gonna be Removing this corrosion with my dental pick. This helps me see the joints better to see how the solder looks. And then also obviously just gets the corrosion off. One of the main problems with this type of corrosion is it can actually separate the chip from the motherboard. These solder joints can go bad. Another problem with this kind of corrosion is it can actually jump two joints together, so elect electricity is flowing between the two joints when it shouldn't. So those are the two main problems with this type of liquid damage. But overall, these solder joints actually look pretty good. You can see once I get them cleaned off, 
then they are nice and shiny. There's no corrosion down on the board itself. So these joints actually look okay. Let's look at this one real quick. Yep, same thing here. That joint's gonna be fine. Okay, now that I'm mostly done with cleaning the corrosion off with my pick, I'm gonna go through with a toothbrush and some IPA and just really get in there with the bristles and clean it all even better. And here you can see how well that looks. This is what it looks like when you have minor corrosion. If any of these solder joints were bad or any of these little traces like these torn up, then I would have to repair those. But here you can see all the solder joints look good. All of them are shiny. None of them have been eaten away by the corrosion. So I'm gonna finish cleaning up the rest of the spots, see how they look, and then we can get this controller back together. So this green motherboard is looking pretty good. I do have to still clean the blue motherboard. Then I also have to clean off the rest of the controller and get as much of the smoke smell out as I can. Then we can test it and see if it works and put it back together. Now this board is looking pretty good. I think it's time to install it back into the controller enough so we can test it. Then we got to clean the controller and put it all back together. So this should be together enough to test it. I'm going to plug it in and see if these buttons work now. Okay, it does come up on the screen. Let's check the analog sticks. Okay, those do work. Trigger buttons work. Let's try the A button. Ah, uh, no, still doesn't work. So unfortunately there's something else wrong with this. I'm thinking it's probably this chip right here as there was some liquid damage on that. And if the liquid damage is underneath the chip, that's gonna cause a problem. This chip is a ball grid array chip, also known as a BGA chip, which means there's solder balls underneath this chip. So I think what I'm gonna try and do is reflow this. So I'm gonna heat the chip up with my hot air soldering station until the solder flows. Then I'll let it cool back down and then we'll see if it works. So here is my sort of strange reflow setup for this chip. I have my silicone heat mat that is protecting the rest of the controller. I have capped on tape protecting any sensitive components on the board. So now I'm gonna bring in some flux and put it all around the chip. That will help the solder flow underneath the chip. Then I'm gonna heat the chip up until I can nudge it just a little bit. That'll tell me that the solder is fully melted. Then I'll let it cool down and put it all back together and test it again. And now this chip has been reflowed. Now I'm gonna get it back together enough to test it and see if that's restored the function of this board. You probably noticed this plastic piece right here did melt a little bit, but the components underneath are fine. There's no problems there. So even though that did melt a little bit, it's gonna be just fine. So now I'm gonna get it back together and see if it works. Now I've got it back together enough to test. Checking it out right here on the gamepad controller tester. And unfortunately, None of the buttons are working just like they weren't before. So now it's time to diagnose this a little bit further. I have a feeling that chip that I just reflowed may need to be replaced, but let's look at it a little closer and see if we can figure anything else out that might be causing the problem. So I was thinking that it might've been this chip, but looking at it further, these analog sticks work fine. It seems like everything on this part of the board works mostly fine. And a lot of things on this board do not work fine. The USB port works fine, and the Xbox X button works fine, but a lot of the other functions do not. These buttons work fine, while these buttons don't work fine. So it may be something on this board. It still could be that chip, but I got some diagnosing to do now. So I've been looking at this blue board, and I just noticed this chip right here that definitely has some more liquid damage here and along these pins. So I suspect this because when we turn it over, these are all the buttons that don't work, these guys right here. And that is, and this chip is directly underneath those buttons. So I think those buttons are controlled by this chip and this chip reads them. So I'm guessing maybe this is our only problem. 
I'm gonna clean this up and I don't think I need to reflow it just because the joints actually look fine, but there are some bridges over here. So I might need to run my iron over these. I'll take a closer look once I get it clean and then we can test it again. Now it's sort of hard to see here, but if you look, this joint has, it looks like sort of some rust on it and so does this one. So I'm actually gonna take my iron and go along these and clean these joints up. If there's a break in the joint right here or if, if it's rusted through, then this chip is not getting a good connection with the pad on the motherboard. So after I get these re-soldered, then I'll go through and test it again and hopefully that'll fix it. And I went through and just redid every joint on this chip just to make sure they're all good. So now I feel pretty confident that this chip is soldered on correctly and each pin is making contact. So I'm gonna put this back together enough to test it and see if we got it figured out. Okay, it's back together enough to test it. I've got it plugged in to the gamepad tester. Let's try one of these buttons. Oh, hey, there we go. That's totally working. That button works. That button, that button works. That's it, we fixed it. So this Xbox Elite 2 controller is working great. If you wanna see more controller repair videos, I'll put a playlist up on your screen so you can go hang out with me over there and see if I can fix those. Thank you again to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.